Welcome to another edition of the NCBI podcast. I'm June Tinsley, Head of Communications and Advocacy with NCBI. And today I have the pleasure of having a, a chat with Lisa O'Donovan, who is a, a law student um, attending UCC going into her, her final year. Um, thank you very much, Lisa, for, for joining us and having a chat with us today. No problem. Thank you so much, June. I suppose just to, to begin with, do you want to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, no problem. So my name's Lisa. Um, I'm living down in West Cork. I'm 27. And as June said, I'm a student. Um, I'm going into my final year of law in UCC. Um, I'm visually impaired. I'm a Cain user. Um, I got my diagnosis when I was 17, um, nearing the end of secondary school. Um, so I'm 10 years in now with my visual impairment. Um, I suppose that's it. That's my brief intro there. That's your synopsis. That's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. And obviously, um, as you mentioned there, you were obviously in the, the latter half of this secondary school um, when you got your, your diagnosis. And tell us, did you get connected with NCBI at that point or was it a couple of years later? I did get connected with NCBI uh, when I was 17, when I got the diagnosis, but I didn't engage with in CBI that much. Um, it was obviously quite a transition, um, quite a, you know, quite a traumatic thing to be hit with. So I was very yes. reluctant to get involved and to reach out to people. So I would yes. say only recently I'm really, um, I'm really getting involved only recently. Fair enough. I mean, as you, as you rightly say, it, it's up to each individual person how they react and adjust and transition and, and it, it takes time um, mm-hmm. to, to absorb the new situation and tell us what, what kind of supports have you availed of so far? Well I suppose the thing I would have availed of the most would have been the mobility training um, especially when I went to UCC um, I would have met with a mobility instructor probably once a week continuously throughout the semester, um, doing different routes, different rooms. Um, so that would have been the most. And as well, doing public transport, um, I had never used the bus service. And then when I went to college, I was suddenly had to use public transport. So I would have done a lot of mobility around getting buses and uh, the different bus stops and, you know, how you should approach the bus stop, how you should, you know, address the driver, different things like that. So definitely mobility training would have been the thing I would mostly be getting. Fair enough. And I suppose given you mentioned you're, you're from, from West Cork, that's quite a, a spectacular but rural area. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I suppose, have you found that a, a little challenging um, comparing it with like Cork City Centre, which is far more urban from a getting around safely perspective? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not I'm not actually living on a bus route, so I'd have to go to my local town to get the bus. Um, And sometimes, you know, it wouldn't just be one bus. I'd have to get two buses to get to my destination. Um, And as well, the the times of buses, you know, the, the schedules are very good. There are lots of buses, but sometimes they just don't suit. So I would find I'd be going up really early to to college to campus and waiting around for a lecture um sometimes it just does it doesn't work but most of the time um it works quite well good good and it's great obviously that you um are so independent to be able to to get up and down from um where you're living up to campus and tell us in terms of kind of orientating yourself around the campus thankfully NCBI was there to, to help out but was there any other um, supports you tapped into as a, as a student? Um, well, I suppose the disability sector in UCC as well. Um, yes. I know when I originally, like I went to UCC when I straight from the Leaving Cert, um, and at that time they had their own mobility instructor. So it would have been a UCC staff member that was doing all the mobility training. Yes. And now that I've gone back to education, they actually, you know, they give the mobility training to NCBI. So it's an NCBI staff member does the mobility training on campus. Um, I suppose, aside from that support, in terms of the mobility training, aside from the mobility, then there would be the technology side of things. 
um, which is great to have that support on campus. And it's, I suppose um, in terms of making sure that you had all the, the, the books that you need, was that all available? Because I appreciate that a law course is very um, book heavy and a lot of reading of case notes and case cases and precedences and, and everything. Um, did you find that a challenge at all or was everything available to you? Um, well, definitely a challenge in actually getting through it all, but it was available. Um, I think especially now, I found when I was in first year, things weren't, well, they were still available, but it was more challenging to get them. Like I would have to book in with an educational assistant and, you know, go to the library together. You'd be, you know, sometimes it would be books or articles that are only available in a hard copy. So you'd be scanning different documents, making them into a readable, accessible format. And it was quite time consuming. But now yes. with COVID, lecturers are choosing, you know, even the core textbooks, they're choosing ones that are available through the library website. Um, and they're, I find they put up a lot more links. If there's any required reading, they provide you with it. So I do think, yeah, that everything is being provided. And of course, we're, we're just coming hopefully out of the global pandemic that is COVID. Um, and the entire academic year that you've just had was all online. Um, and appreciate that that brings some benefits from the technology point of view. But are, are there any aspects that you find quite challenging as a student um, being stuck online all the time? Um, I'm actually one of those people who have like think that the online side of things has really worked to my advantage. Um, as well as the visual impairment, I also have a hearing impairment. So there were, say like tutorials would be done in smaller classrooms and there wouldn't be a microphone system, which you would have in the lecture halls. So I would okay. find being in a tutorial, you know, you're listening to a tutor, but also it's very interactive. You know, everyone in the room is talking. I wouldn't actually be able to hear anyone even that people, you know, some people are very soft spoken, people would be at the back of the room, it's kind of like you wouldn't know where to focus your attention. So you don't know why, where to listen to or who to listen to. But okay. now, like that the tutorials were being actually held online, I could just hear everything. So I was saying to one of my lecturers recently, I was like, I've never been so involved in college in the academic side of things because usually if I couldn't hear in a tutorial that would really discourage me from attending the next True. week and the next week I'd be like oh, what's the point I can't hear anything so now that I can hear everything I'd be you know pushing up my hand and answering questions and I'd be very um involved so I, I do think working online has um has worked in my favor in a lot of ways that's brilliant to hear because I, I appreciate it. it it can be challenging for, for some um, to make that transition to fully online learning. Um, and in, in terms of going back to campus in September, um, hopefully the, the, the social side of things will be able to be available to students um, and hopefully you can fully participate in your final year from a social side as well as an academic side. Mm -hmm. um, and what are your plans after college, do you think? Oh, <laughs> um, I've actually been getting that question a lot recently and I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> get the degree first. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I mean, once you have a degree, there's so much, you know, there's so many places you can go once you just have a degree, you can branch into any kind of area. Um, I'm really enjoying like the human rights side of things. Um, I got involved now over the summer with the advocacy network in CBI's advocacy network and it really um, it kind of clicked with the the aspects of law that I was liking the human rights to having a say um, kind of freedom of speech and having choices so I, I really liked that so I'm kind of thinking something something advocacy something um human rights or something children's rights um i did a module this year um in child law and it was really interesting to like look at something but you're looking at it through the lens of a child and it was really really interesting to try to get that perspective to think how 
you know, things are being done and how it would affect children. So that was another area I really found good. Excellent, excellent. Well, as you rightly say, having the, the degree in your back pocket opens so many doors to you. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully you'll be able to develop plenty of experience to um, al align with your interests and, and passions. And I suppose, finally, if I can just ask you, what one piece of advice would you give to another person who's recently received a, a diagnosis of sight loss? Um, well, I suppose the first thing I would say would be to be patient. Um, like, be patient with yourself. It is a transition yeah. and it does take time. Um, like I said, I'm 10 years with my diagnosis and I'm really only at that point now that I'm fully, I'm like fully accepting it. I'm fully embracing it. Um, like even in terms of mobility training, I was under this illusion that you do a route once and you would just know it. You would get from A to B the next day without an issue. But that yes. isn't the case, you know, things take time, things take practice. So I just say, be patient with yourself and you will get there. Um, it'll take time. Um, sorry, I know you said one piece of advice, but <laughs> I'm going to give a second one. That's OK, um, no problems. Just to like to really emphasize for people that you are not alone. That's uh, such a cliche, but it's so true. You're not alone. Um, I was in a check in and chat call there a few weeks ago and I've never met anyone with the same eye condition as me. Um, and I'm, I'm from quite a big family. I'm the only person that has the visual impairment and I'm the only person, say, in my local area that I know of. I wouldn't have any close friends that would have something similar. So I was in the check in and chat and I think there was six of us on the call. And out of the six of us, three of us had the same eye condition. And okay. I was just, I was totally amazed. I was just like, oh my God. I was like, I can't believe you have the, the same eye condition. I, you know, I didn't know there were other people in the world that had the same eye condition as me. And it was so great to actually, you know, to actually know there was someone else. And for them to say things that I could completely relate to um was just so great so I would say to people I would really encourage people especially a new diagnosis I would really encourage them to reach out whether it's in CBI or Irish Sky Dogs or fighting blindness you know reach out and just try to get involved with someone and I suppose as you as you rightly say then mixing and meeting other people with a vision impairment can certainly you can not only learn from them but also just have that kind of um support to, to know that you're not alone Mm -hmm, exactly. And um, delighted to, to hear, Lisa, that you're going to be part of the advocacy network moving forward. Um, and certainly if, if anybody else who's listening would like to join um, NCBI's number of advocate groups, please feel free to, to get in touch with us. The same way to access all our services is 1850 33 43 53. But for now, I'd just like to say thanks very much, Lisa, for having a chat with us. You're very welcome. Thank you so much.